Good evening, class. Today the topic will be trapezoids and kites. So we've talked about parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. But now we're going to take a look at trapezoids and kites. These shapes are different than the other ones. Um, and we're going to break it into basically two parts. We're going to look at just trapezoids first, and in particular, isosceles trapezoids. So, trapezoids are quadrilaterals with only one pair of parallel sides called bases. Angles on the same base are called base angles. The other two sides are called the legs. An isosceles triangle is one with congruent legs. So if you look at this picture here, this is a trapezoid because only one pair of sides is marked as parallel. And these parallel sides are what we call the bases of this trapezoid. Each one is a different base. The angles that are attached to a base are a base angle pair. So the bottom left and bottom right here are base angle pair because they're both part of this bottom base. This angle in the upper left and angle up, angle in the upper right are another base angle pair because they're attached to the top base. And the sides that are not bases are called legs. So in isosceles trapezoid, those legs will be congruent. In not isosceles trapezoids, those legs won't be. Let's look at what's so special about. Actually, let's first just be able to identify. Uh, if it's a I saw this, if it's a trapezoid or not. So when I look at a shape like this, what matters for it to be I saw, oh, sorry not isosceles trapezoid. What matters for it to be a trapezoid is simply that I have one set of parallel sides and one set that isn't. In fact, if I had two sets of parallel sides, it's not a trapezoid. It's a parallelogram. So in this problem here, it says determine whether it's a trapezoid, and it gives me four coordinate points. So we're going to have to plot them. These coordinate points, A, 0, 4. So at 0, 4, I put a point. And I'm going to call it A, 0, 4. All right, the next point, it says it's 4, 4. So out here, I have 4, 4. And this is what I call B here. Now, I know it's trapezoid A, B, C, D. So I know I can connect these two right away because A, B, C, D. C is 8, negative 2. 8, negative 2. So somewhere around here. I know I can connect these two, and I know that this is C, 8, comma, negative 2. And the last one I bet is something, comma, negative 2. Uh, it says 2, comma, 1. So 2, comma, 1. I think I miswrote this. but Now, this one is clearly not a trapezoid. But the way that I would have to do this um, to show to make sure that it's, there's no doubt in anyone's mind here that this is not a trapezoid, is I'd have to show that the sides opposite are not parallel. So I would have to show that um, the slope of segment AB does not equal the slope of B DC. And I'd have to show that the slope of BC does not equal the slope of AD. Now the reason I say this is because the other ones, it's not always going to be easy to tell if it's parallel or not. In this case, it's kind of glaring and obvious now that I've drawn it. However, um, I would still have to find each slope. So let's rewrite down the slope formula. Slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in here, if I'm doing the slope of AB, y2, I'm going to call 4 over here. y2 is 4. So y1 is this coordinate right here, 4. x2 is 4. x1 is 0. So this slope is 0 over 4 or 0. So the slope of AB is 0. I'm going to circle it so it's a little bit easier to identify. The slope of DC is what I'm going to do next because these two are the ones that should match up or hopefully don't in this case. y2 is negative 2. y1 is 1. x2 is 8. x1 is 2. This equals negative 3 over 6, which equals negative 1 half. So the slope of this is negative 1 half. Those are not the same. So I've shown that this is true. Those two do not equal the slopes. So that means those two sides are not parallel. Now I have to try the other two sides. Let's try the slope of segment BC. Well, segment of BC, I'm going to call this y2, so negative 2 
minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I have negative 6 over 4 or negative 3 halves. And I don't really see a need to reduce this. I'm going to circle it to make it a little bit clearer where it is. And last but not least, I have to show that the slope of segment AD does not equal the slope of BC. So y2 is 1. y1 is 4. x2 is 2. Um, uh, x1 is 0. When I plug this in, I get th negative 3 over 2. And I all of a sudden say, hold on a second. Those two are equal. I went into this with the assumption that this was not a trapezoid because it didn't look like what I expected to be a trapezoid. However, I've shown that these two slopes are equal. These two slopes are not. So that means this side and this side are parallel. Even though this does not look like our usual trapezoid, it's a trapezoid because segment AD is parallel to segment BC. I think I just threw you all for a loop there because you were expecting this to not be equal. But it is. It's a trapezoid. You might not have expected looking at it. In fact, I looked at it and said, it's not a trapezoid. But it is. This is why you do your work. Because you could be wrong in your assumption. I was. And I'm, I'm a teacher. I, I teach geometry. So show your work. Okay? All right, let's do the next problem. I think what we're going to look at is the next, uh, next theorem. And there's three in total. Now, an isosceles trapezoid, remember, is a trapezoid that has its legs being congruent. So what this is saying here, in all three of these, is if a trapezoid is isosceles, the base angle pairs are congruent. OK? It also says, if a trapezoid is isosceles, or sorry, it goes the other way. If I know that um, the pairs of base angles are congruent, in fact, just one pair is enough, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. And I also know it's an isosceles trapezoid if and only if it has congruent diagonals, just like a rectangle. So let's do this. An isosceles trapezoid is one that has this to be true. All right? This is an isosceles trapezoid. It also means that the base angles are congruent. And it's a two-way street. The base angles being congruent means it's an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid means the base angles are congruent. All right? Awesome. And the last thing, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, then I know without a shadow of a doubt, these have to be congruent. So I'm going to label this here A, B, C, D. Length of segment AC has to let equal length of segment BD. Alright? That's what it means for this to be isosceles. And there we go. That's the theorems in pictures. 8.4 says if isosceles, that's true. The base angles are congruent. Each pair. 8.18.8, 8, sorry, 8.15 says if I have a trapezoid and the um, base angles are congruent, then it's isosceles. And last but not least, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, its diagonals are congruent. And the only way it's going to be an isosceles trapezoid is if those diagonals are congruent. Let's apply this. I know that quadrilateral EFGH is an isosceles trapezoid. The measure of angle E is 72 degrees. Find the other three angle measures. All right. Now, if this was not an isosceles, I'd be stuck. But luckily for us, they said isosceles trapezoid. So when I draw my shape here, I know that this is congruent, this is congruent. E, F, G, H. 72 degrees. Ah, isosceles trapezoid means this angle and this angle is congruent, this angle and this angle is congruent. So the way I drew this, um, measure of angle F would have to equal 72 degrees. Now, I don't know what the other two angles are. 
Let's call this one x. Oh, if that's x, this is x. Oh, and all of the angles of a quadrilateral add up to be... Sorry. No, yeah, I, I'm right. All the angles of a quadrilateral add up to be 360. 72 plus 72 plus x plus x equals 360. 144 plus 2x equals 360. 2x equals 216. x equals 108. Measure of angle H and measure of angle G is equal to 108. There, I found all three angles. I believe I have one last example for our Sassanus trapezoid. Now, I tell you in this picture that segment AC and segment BD are equal. Now, I ask if those two are equal, is the trapezoid isosceles? Explain. Well, let's see. If I go back to my theorem 8.16, it says a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if the diagonals are congruent. Now I look. Segment AC and segment BD are my diagonals, and they're congruent. This trapezoid is isosceles because the diagonals are congruent. This trapezoid is isosceles because the diagonals are congruent. That's literally what I'd write. This trapezoid is isosceles because the diagonals are congruent. All right, that's it for trapezoids. This is going to be about half your assignment. The other half is the other shape we're going to look at, a kite. Ooh, my bad. I forgot about something vital. Uh, the mid-segment of a trapezoid. The mid-segment is just like the mid-segment of a triangle. It's the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid. It connects one to the other. There's only one seg mid-segment per trapezoid. There's only one mid-segment per trapezoid. And it cuts the trapezoid basically in half down the middle. So if I would draw a mid-segment up here, it would go from here to here, and it would cut it in half. This segment here would equal this segment here, this segment here would equal this segment here. All right? So it connects to the midpoints. Now, what's so special about that is the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, and its length is one-half the sum of the lengths of the bases. So, in the picture there, I show you some key things that you need to know. If I have a trapezoid here, like this, and I know that this and this are parallel. If I drew a point here and called this a midpoint, and I drew a point over here and called it a midpoint, when I connect those two points, this is a mid-segment. That shape right there is a mid-segment. What's special about it is it's parallel to both of these sides. And it's half the sum of the two bases. So if this is 10 and this is 6, this is 1 half 10 plus 6. Now I realize it isn't the scale. 10 should have been down here. 6 should have been up there. But besides the point. So this would be 1 half of 16 or it would be 8. Halfway between. That's another way to do this problem. What's halfway between 6 and 8? Eight? 8. What's, sorry, what's halfway between 6 and 10? 8. What's halfway between 5 and 7? 6. You could just find the number halfway between the two. Or you could add them together and divide by 2. Either method is correct. The book says add them together, divide by 2. I say if you find the number halfway between, you've done the same thing. Let's look at an example of what you might deal with. Find the value of x. So, let's draw, an ice, um, not necessarily a isosceles trapezoid, but let's draw a trapezoid. In fact, let's make it look like it's not isosceles. This side and this side is parallel, and I've drawn the mid-segment as marked. Alright, this is labeled as x, this is 17, and this down here is 25. Now, there's two ways to do this. I can say, what's the number halfway between 17 and 25? Or I could do it this way. X equals one half of 17 plus 25. This is the way the book wants it to do. X equals one half of 42. Half of 42 is 21. The other way, what's happening between 17 and 25? Well, if I drew a number line, 
17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, so 25, 18, 24, 19, 23, 20, 22, and they meet at the same time at 21. So x would be 21. Those are the two ways I'd even attempt doing this problem. I'd suggest that one because that's going to be more consistent with some of your answers. This way it might be easier for some of you just to process. Now the reason I might lean toward this one is because of the next example. I asked the same as that question. You see, it says find the value of x. But this time, I would make it a little bit more challenging. I've made it so there's two different x's. So it's not as simple as saying, all right, what's the number halfway between? Now I've got to do some algebra. I'm going to have to do it the way I did first last time. There's not really an easier way. So if I have 5x here and 18.7 and 12x minus 1.7, I look. That middle number is half of the sum of the other two. So 18.7 equals 1 half of 5x plus 17x minus 1.7. 18.7 equals 1 half of 17x. Why did I do 17? This is 12x here. 17x minus 1.7. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. If I multiply by 2 over here, this fraction will cancel out. And if I multiply by 2 over here, I get a different number. I get 37.4 equals 17x minus 1.7. Add 1.7 to both sides, I get 17x to be um, 39.1. Divide by 17 to both sides, x equals uh, 2.3. And there we go. The value of x is 2.3 here. A little bit tougher? Yes. But all I did was I said, all right, this middle number has to go half the sum of the bases. Plugged it in, solved it all the way through. I didn't deal with fractions by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal one half, or by multiplying both sides by the denominator. In other words, all right, that's it for trapezoids, at least for this section. Um, but we're also going to take another look at a shape called a uh, kite. And a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but not opposite sides being congruent. Um, so basically, it's not a parallelogram. It's not a trapezoid. Um, the pairs next to each other will be congruent, but not the pairs across. It will look something like this, whether it's rotated, flipped, whatever. But you have two sets of sides being congruent and two sets of sides being congruent, but not across. So a rhombus has been excluded. A kite can never be a rhombus. Throw that idea out. A kite is never a rhombus. So, there's two theorems for kites. The first, if it's a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular, just like a rhombus. But remember, a kite cannot be a rhombus. So, a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. Also, if the quadrilateral is a quadrilateral, if the quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. And it's always going to be this pair here across from each other, between the two congruent sides. It will never be this angle and this angle. It will always be these two. What do I mean by that? Well, what if I would redraw my shape here? Which pair of sides would be, sorry, which pair of angles would be congruent? It's not this one and this one because we're not between the, those two. It's this one and this one. It's always the one between two non-congruent sides, or the two sides that are not congruent. So, all you need to know about a kite, two pairs of sides being congruent, and they're right next to each other. They have one pair across from each other that is congruent. Sorry, one pair of angles across from each other that is congruent, but it's never this pair. And the diagonals intersect at a right angle. Let's see how we might apply this. Find the value of x. The question I'm most likely to ask you is the angle one here. And let's just find the value of x. So let me redraw my pictures quickly here. All right, let's look at the left kite first. 
Now, I know that all the angles of a quadrilateral add up to be 360. So if I look at what I have, I have 50 degrees, I have 100 degrees, and I have 1x. However, that's only three angles. I need four. Oh, yeah. This angle and this angle is congruent. So this is also x degrees. So I actually have two x degrees here. And now I look for four angles adding together to be 360. Yep, all three or all four angles have to add together to be 360. 2x plus 150 equals 360. Subtract 150 from both sides. 2x equals 210. x equals 105. The next problem is pretty similar. It's a kite. All right, my drawing is horrible, but it's a kite, okay? Right here. I know one pair of angles is congruent. This pair right here, which means this is 120 degrees. And just like over there, I know if I add all four angles together, I get 360. So x plus 120 plus 120 plus 40 should equal 360. Simplify the left side a little bit. x plus uh, 240 plus 40 is 280 equals 360. Subtract 280 from both sides. x equals 80. And there we go. This is the difficult, most difficult problems you'll probably see with the kites. Oh, the toughest part of the section is the mid-segments. Know that a mid-segment of a trapezoid um, is half the sum of the bases and is parallel to the bases. And you pretty much got the section. Um, I believe that's all for today. So, till next time.